Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sit down, sit down. You should be applauding those guys, and Good Morning America. Every time I see that, I start crying. They did a fantastic job of that piece. We're, uh, you know, we're really not that good. Um, you know, it's, it, it's funny because, you know, that piece is all about, um, you know, inspiration and, you know, being inspired. And uh, I am grateful uh, for, to all of you for inviting me down here and welcoming me to this Summer Institute for the North Carolina New Schools Project. Um, you know, and it oftentimes when I see that and I reflect, I, I want to know what inspires me. And frankly, what really inspires me, you know, and I, I just tweeted about it moments ago, um, is being around a group of committed, energetic, enthusiastic, excited educators, people who get it. So while Urban Prep um, might have inspired Good Morning America, clearly it's folks like you in this room that inspire me, and I hope you know that, and I hope that you can continue to inspire each other and inspire the world. So please join me in giving you a big round of applause. Um, I've also been inspired by a good friend of mine who left me, abandoned me in Chicago and moved down here for some strange reason. I think it had something to do with the weather. His name is Don Leshnock, who, you know, when we founded Urban Prep, was with me, talking to me, going back and forth around issues, and has constantly, every time we do anything, he sends me an email or a text message telling me what we did wrong, and how we need to fix it, because he has all the answers. I'm very grateful to him uh, for being here today. And I also need to give one other shout out, and that's to uh, Sophie Frankowski. Where is Sophie? Sophie, Sophie, there she is. So I have a quick story to tell you, um, and I have this bad habit of saying I have a quick story and then it takes forever. But um, talk about inspiration. So I just met Sophie today for the first time. But when she called me and we were having a planning meeting around this conference and you know, this, this talk today, she said to me, you know, you know my brother, Rich Frankowski. And I said, yes, of course I know Rich. And then I just went on this long tirade about how phenomenal Rich um, uh, person he is. And it reminded me of one of the reasons I got into this work was because of Sophie's brother. And who knew that a you know, white guy from uh, Alabama could inspire me to go and try to start some schools in Chicago? I was a counselor in college for a summer program for high school students. And Rich, Sophie's younger, bro younger brother, ca yeah, came to the program, and he was my most favorite student in the whole program. And I like to think that I had a positive impact on him. And you know, I think the positive experience I had counseling in that program and working with Rich led me to want, you know, I got the you know, juice, I got the bug, I wanted to keep doing it. And that led me to go off and become an educator. And then after that, teaching in DC, I went to, came back home to Chicago and started um, uh, Urban Prep. So you never really know how people are going to inspire you or impact you in your lives, and I hope we can always be open to that. Now that I've done all that, uh, I, I, I have some prepared remarks that I will give you, but I'm gonna tell you one more story, <laughs> right? I had a student once who uh, had to give a speech, and I asked him if he had his speech written down and was ready to give a speech. Was he ready to give a speech? And his response to me was, no, Mr. King, I'm going to do it a cappella. <laughs> and I said, no, Mr. Smith, you're going to write it down. <laughs> uh, because if I don't write what I'm going to say down, you'll never get the story. You'll just hear a whole bunch of stories and anecdotes. You'll never get my point. So I have my remarks written down, and I'm going to read what I have written here, but I hope you don't mind if from time to time I do it extemporaneously or, as we like to call it at Urban Prep, a cappella. <laughs> as you all know, 
The network of schools that I operate has been in the news a lot lately. This has been mostly because we've had this 100% college acceptance rate for the last two years for our two graduating classes. The story has been covered all over the place. Um, so, you know, over 200 news outlets, it's been on Oprah and Good Morning America and People Magazine, the New York Times, you, you name it. Um, the blogosphere has been buzzing. You know, people have been going nuts over this story. You know, 100% of the students at this school getting into college. So much so that I've even received emails from folks saying, hey, Tim, have you heard about this school in Chicago that got all of its kids into college? That's when you know something has gone viral. Um, and so, you know, it makes me ask the question, who knew a black boy getting into college was such a big deal? I ask that question with uh, more than a little irony. So on the one hand, I know that it is a big deal. Black boys have the highest high school dropout rate. The Schott Foundation's most recent report found that nationally we've got about a 50% high school dropout rate for black boys in Chicago. It's closer to 60%. Um, according to research done by the Council of Great City Schools, black boys without disabilities are scoring lower on math assessments than white males with disabilities are. Black males have the highest rate of contact with the criminal justice system among their peers. The leading cause of death among young black men is homicide. The third leading cause of death is suicide. So this population is killing itself and each other at alarming rates. Um, and uh, most startling for us in Chicago, and this isn't that different nationally when you're looking at urban centers, um, only one in 40 African-American boys will uh, make it through college um, in Chicago. And here I go, you know, acapella in it a little bit. But, you know, this, this, this data point was most recently driven home when I asked the question, how many African-American males start out as ninth graders in the Chicago public schools? And the response I received was 10,000. And then I asked the next question. I said, so you're telling me that 10,000 black boys start in the ninth grade in Chicago public schools. What number will end up with a four-year college degree, a bachelor's degree? 250. 2.5%. 250 out of 10,000 African-American boys who start out in Chicago public schools as ninth graders will end up getting a four-year degree. So yes, if you look at that, a black boy getting into college is a big deal. But on the other hand, I stand before you a black man who was once a boy, my parents still think I am, <laughs> who went to college. I know plenty of other black men, in this room in fact, who went to college. In the world in which I grew up, going to college was not the exception. Going to college was the rule. Our conversations at our dinner table weren't about, are you going to college? They weren't even about, what college are you going to? The conversations at my dinner table were, are you going to get an MBA, a PhD, a JD, or be a doctor? Those were the conversations I had in my household. So for me, a black boy getting into college isn't a big deal at all. In my world, black boys go to college. So if I'm being honest, I think the reason I started Urban Prep, or one of the reasons I started Urban Prep, had a lot to do with wanting to make these two worlds collide. The world in which I grew up, where it's a given that a black boy is going to go to college, and the world in which we live, the world that I saw, in which 2.5%, 250 out of 10,000 were making it to college. What happened in my world that allowed me to know that I was going to go to college? And more important, how does that translate into the work that we need to do in all of our schools? 
the work that I know you all are doing in your schools, the work that we're doing at Urban Prep. How does that really translate, and how do we make sure that every single school in doing, is doing it?